In this video, all these desserts look like actual pieces of art. It's gorgeous. How could somebody even eat that? I'm gonna be taking you on a tour. Oh yeah. It's hot, steamy, juicy, and succulent. Of Ho Chi Minh City's most expensive buffet. First of all, cheers. We opted for the alcohol package, so I have unlimited wine for the next three hours. Ho Chi Minh City is the biggest city in all of Vietnam at around almost 10 million people. This is a city with plenty of food and plenty of buffets. I've gone to very cheap buffets in the past, but the buffet we're going to today costs over $70. Right behind me, you can see Caravel Hotel. The buffet is called 19 Buffet. The buffet itself is $72.52, but if you want to get unlimited alcohol, that's an extra $14.54. That's not bad. I mean, go to New York, any cocktail is going to cost you that for one cocktail. Here it's unlimited cop. Tails, sorry, awkward place to take a breath. Let's go see if we can get our money's worth. Officially, the buffet opens in 17 minutes. I want to get here a little bit early because as soon as the doors open, people are going to rip this thing apart. It never looks better than before people get here. We're going to go take a look and see what kind of options they have. I've been to other expensive buffets that were a bit more broad. Here, it's really condensed. There's tons of meat and it's all together. This is all seafood right here. We have some scallops, abalone. If you come here, they have all the roasted meats. Also, they have pizza. Now, I'm not sure who pays $71 and then gets pizza at a buffet, but that's not going to be meat today. As you come down here, they have a foie gras station. I think they will sear it a little bit and then maybe put it on some bread. So I'm definitely going to come back for that. Right here, sushi. It looks pretty gorgeous. They have like literal sushi flowers from salmon, from whatever fish that is. They have some rolls. They have some nigiri. All that looks stunning and delicious. They're still setting up a little bit. You can say they're putting some desserts on the dessert area. Some of these desserts look like actual pieces of art. Take a look at this. It's gorgeous. How could somebody even eat that? Feels mean to do. Here, you can get your steak incredibly rare. No, I'm just kidding. I think they'll cook this up for you. They have some steak. They have an octopus. Even more seafood here. We've got Nails. We've got another kind of shellfish. We have lobsters up here, shrimp down here, and then down here, it looks like different colors of caviar or fish eggs at least. And then over here, the oysters. Now, do I like oysters? I don't know. I'm always right on the fence. But what I've learned is smaller is better. And then you have to include some Vietnamese sauces, some lime, maybe some salt and pepper. So we're going to try some of those soon. We have just a couple more minutes before they open and then we're going to get to it. Round one, I'm gonna start with oysters. They have shucked and unshucked. I'm gonna go with the shucked ones. I'm guessing these would be local. Unside, sauce is a must. Mmm, yummy whatever that is. And yummy whatever this is. It's probably salt and pepper right here. And then some limes to go with that. This is a cracker topping tray. Sonny, you're at a buffet. Why would you get some cheap Ritz crackers? Well, because you can put fun things on top of the crackers. Right here, eggs. So I'm told these are shrimp eggs. And then these are wasabi flavored eggs. Awesome. And then this is just normal caviar. What's great is to go with the fish eggs, you you can also have chicken eggs. So this is some diced up egg whites. And then this looks like a heavy whipping cream. We've got our oysters, we've got our eggs. Let's go eat. First of all, cheers. We opted for the alcohol package. So I have unlimited wine for the next three hours. So I got two random sauces. They're both like a kind of a vinegar sauce. I'm gonna put some of that in there. Put a little salt and pepper, a squeeze of citrus. It's soaking up all those sauces. Let's try it out. Pretty good. It's gooey. It's like a loogie, but the flavoring does help a bit. It's just a strong vinegar kind of flavor that's been added. I still don't understand why some people absolutely love and adore oysters, like the person holding the camera right now who happens to be married to me. Here, many crackers. Here, one cracker. So I want to point out a couple things. This is caviar right here, but this is not going to be like the caviar from a sturgeon. This is probably from like a cod or some other much, much cheaper fish. And then it's dyed black to make it look like the fancy expensive caviar. It doesn't mean it can't taste good though. It's very salty, briny, chewy. I still like it, but that is still definitely an imitation of the real thing. Here, wasabi caviar. Mmm, very, very fine, tiny little eggs. They explode as you chew on them. A hint of wasabi flavor. And I'm told this is shrimp eggs. Oh. Super briny, intense, seafoody. Forgot the chicken eggs. Chicken eggs, briny, seafoody. Oh wait, no, it's just an egg white. This here is not even an appetizer. It's more like an amuse-bouche. It's just a flavor, a taste of what's to come. Let's go up for another round. I've been told that this middle section right here is for display purposes only. You can eat the food, but you don't take the food from here. You actually order it and then they'll cook it up for you. So I've got lobster, I've got abalone and crab. Let's go see the food. They've just brought me my seafood that they cooked in the back. The abalone looks absolutely delicious. I think this is garlic and butter. And I really appreciate that you can come here and fill up on abalone. Abalone is very expensive. I've stabbed it. It's looking hot, steamy. Let's try it out. 
abalone has the best texture of meat. It's almost like eating beef hearts or something. It's really dense. There's piles of garlic on there. It's buttery, it's rich, it's divine. Speaking of divine, our next thing right here, this is a popular preparation for a lot of different seafood in Vietnam. When I see it, I always feel like, why would you put cheese on seafood? My fellow Americans who are watching this, would you ever just drape cheese over lobster and cook it like this? Let's try it out. I'm gonna pry out. Oh, tearing this out just in this moment sold me on the $71. Holy cow, that looks good. Mm-hmm, interesting. Buttery, juicy, great texture to the meat. The cheese takes some getting used to. As somebody who is an avid fan of cheese, I still find it unusual that they would put it on lobster, on this premium meat, but hey, it's kind of working. Mm, what's up? That food secretly for my wife. Turns out she wants to eat some food too. Very selfish, I know, but I have to accommodate her. Boom, over here, crab. I asked, what kind of crabs are they? They said normal crabs. What they meant was mud crabs. Look at that, you can just pop the top. We all know by now I like king crab and something just big and meaty and you can rip the meat out. This though could be promising. In the head, they might have some eggs. Are you supposed to eat that? Okay, my wife, who happens to be feeding me, says that is food. It tastes like food. So it's a tamarind crab. It's got a little tart sweetness to it. Oh. I ate the part that used to be food for the crab. You gotta be careful of that head. That head is full of shit. I'm looking at this, I can't do it. It's sticky, it's small, there's so many tiny pieces. I'm gonna gift this to my wife because she knows exactly what to do with this and I'm gonna go for something more hearty. Next round, I've already had a lot of seafood. It's time for some land animals, except for this. I have to try this, it's unusual. It's my wife's absolute favorite. I shouldn't be using my hand. That is an oyster with melted cheese on top. I think I'm gonna try some of this hand. Oh, so they're gonna cut it fresh right in front of me. Oh yeah, it's hot, steamy, juicy, and succulent. All right, there we go, come on in. Okay, so I'm told they have a beef option and a lamb option. Right now she's gonna slice up some lamb for me. That looks tender and delicious and juicy. Right here's what I really care about. This is the foie gras station. Foie gras, por favor. So right here we've asked for a fresh order. He's gonna put five of these little patties on here. You can see immediately they're so full of fat. It looks like he added some Crisco or vegetable oil, but no, that is just pure fattiness coming out of each slice. Right here, we have gorgeous foie gras. And then these right here look like, I don't know, if you were a piece of baby bread, you would need to nourish yourself on this. It is a peculiar shape. So I'm gonna break the bread open, and then I'm gonna stuff some of the foie gras inside. And that might even be too heavy. One time we went to Hanoi to do a video about a buffet there, and the chef said that one time he saw a Vietnamese family eat nothing but foie gras. Well, you'd be surprised. We've had guests at a table of six, ate about 150 slices. What? Yes. Uh Really? Without blinking. It's just pure fat. They must have destroyed their plumbing. I get you're trying to beat the system. Not worth it. Cheers. Mmm. Rich, soft, tender, fatty, decadent. This is how Jeff Bezos feels when he wakes up in the morning. I want to try it with that mango sauce because it is so rich that you do almost want to cut it with something sweet. Delicious. It's like a mango puree. Right here, oyster. The lobster with cheese, that kind of makes sense to me. This is a briny, oceanic oyster. Salty, mixed with cheese. My wife said, you have to try it out. You will change your mind. Let's see. Not briny. I thought it'd be like the taste of the ocean mixed with melted cheese, which is not a combination that I want, but that's pretty good. It just tastes creamy and meaty. All right, I stand corrected. I was being egotistical. Cheese on an oyster. That's pretty good. Next, we have lamb. Ooh, check out this lamb sliced fresh for me. Mmm, very much to need. I have a mustard sauce here, just for a little bit of extra flavor. It's lamby, but I can say it is a little bit bland. There's not a ton of flavor to it. So I think if you're gonna get meat like this here, you have to add your own sauces. Overall, it's juicy and delicious. It's just lacking a bit of flavors. Here, a big old piece of ham. It's so funny, she gave me this giant slice and then she said, is that enough? This is enough for a football player. Mm, that's nice. And that's completely different because with the ham, they would put it in a salty brine. So the salt has already permeated the meat. It's every bite from the inside out is gonna be kind of salty. Soft, tender, delicious. That's a nice ham. I'm not sure how much more I can fit in my body at this point. I'm gonna try to do one to two more rounds and then I gotta call it quits. Let's go for more. So here's the difficult part about any buffet. As soon as you get like three quarters full, food starts to look less attractive. And so at this point, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna eat. I have such a small amount of stomach space left. I have to really choose wisely at this point. Sushi. Here we have some wasabi paste. Mmm, I'll just put that on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Ginger, important palate cleanser. Wow, they even give you some of this sliced cabbage. All right. Radish, not cabbage. 
it's it's uh, not cabbage. I'm gonna grab some salmon, and then we got some uh, unlabeled fish. Ooh, that looks nice. Over here, some salmon nigiri. This right here just looks like kimbap. And then finally here, some tofu skin with rice and vinegar and sugar. I don't know what it's called. It looks delicious. Ooh, look at this plate. Oh my gosh, I could be a plating expert. The final missing element, soy sauce. Oh, thank God, it's a teapot full of soy sauce. Let's go eat. Oh, check it out. Course number 400. Here we have the Japanese section. Now, is this real wasabi? Probably not. This is probably a horseradish paste. First salmon. Look how nicely marbled that salmon is. Give a little bit of a dip. Do you guys worry about mercury poisoning? Because they say fish is amazing and it has omega-3 fatty acids, and then they say don't eat it because it has mercury. How bad can mercury be for you? <laughs> I should read books sometimes. Cheers. Mm, high grade, delicious quality salmon. That is very nice. And then we have this right here, a white fish. I am told recently, this is actually sea bass. Let's see how that compares to salmon. Different texture, not so like creamy and delicious like that salmon, but also nice, just maybe slightly more stringy, no strong flavor to it. This right here reminds me of Korean kimbap. So the kimbap generally does not have anything raw inside of it. It would just be like pickled ingredients or eggs or roots or kimchi, rice, things like that. So is it kimbap? Probably no, it's probably a Japanese sushi roll. Cheers. Hmm. Just okay, flavors aren't really popping. The rice feels a bit too congealed. I think it's just been hanging out a little bit too long. It's decent. Here, oh my God, these are my favorite. I forgot what they're called though. Mm. Mm. Unbelievable, delicious. A little bit of ginger to cleanse the palate. Cleanse. All right, let me go see if I can find something interesting for the grand finale. Guys, for our last course, I'm getting very full. And what I've realized after all these courses and after all these foods that the real strength here is in the seafood. So why deny it? Here, this is a hen shell scallop. In there, they are gonna cook this up in a very Vietnamese way with peanuts and with shallot oil. It's gonna be delicious. So I'm gonna get a few different types of seafood, but I'm also gonna get a dessert. Right here is their signature dessert. They said you have to try this before you leave. This is the flan. Now this has been unmolested, untouched. Oh, it is thick. I'm gonna get a nice piece like that. It's like this delicious thick caramel sauce. Oh, you can see it's got weight to it. I got my dessert. I'm waiting on seafood and then we're going to sit down for one final course. Right here we have our absolute final, final course. I swear I cannot do any more after this. I want to show you something special. Yes, I've been drinking white wine this whole time, but they came up to us and they said, we also have cocktails. How about a Long Island iced tea? Absolutely. I said, yes. Yeah. So let's try that. Oh. Powerful. Let's take a look at the seafood here. Octopuses. This is grilled and actually it looks like they shrink down quite a bit, huh? Oh yeah, delicious, smoky, chewy. I can like feel the suction cups on his little legs and then they just put some oil on there. Deep breath. Every fat guy who's watching this who's been to a buffet knows this kind of deep breathing you have to do. This isn't like deep breathing like I'm trying to get focus on the day. It's like I'm trying to stay alive so I can eat more food. Take a look at this, the pen shell. Now this is a classic Vietnamese preparation. Shallot oil, peanuts, it's gonna taste like a little charcoal-y. Cheers. As scallops go, surprisingly tough flavors, very nice. Right here, snails. In Vietnamese, it's called oh, I just got judged by my Vietnamese wife because I didn't get the poop sack out. Okay, I got it by the head. Oh, you got it. Come on. Oh, there you go. That is what you're looking for. That is a big, ugly beast. It looks hideous, but tastes delicious. I'll give it a little bit of a dip right here in this thick fish sauce. Let's try it out. Okay, hold on. Mixed feelings. <laughs> a mix of textures because the meaty part is great, it's crunchy, it's kind of chewy, and then the poopy part is very soft and warm. When I say poopy part, I mean you're actually eating the whole digestive tract is inside. It doesn't taste bad, it's like a poop pate. Very fascinating. Overall, I like it. Here, our final thing. If you don't know what flan is, flan is a creme caramel flan, huh? <laughs> Flan has a rich toasted sugar caramel flavor from the topping, and the base tastes very milky, perfectly sweet, and lightly eggy. Let's try it out. It is like taking an ecstasy pill, except that you don't have a hangover the next day. There's like a touch of delicious, tantalizing caramel flavor, but beneath that, a base of intensely creamy, milky notes. It's like if a cow dunked its udder in caramel and then you sucked off that cow. But luckily, you don't have to suck off a cow. You can just eat this and it feels much more civilized. Boom, we did it. 75 different dishes in my stomach right now. That's gonna be good for me later. We're gonna go outside at this moment and I'm gonna tell you my final thoughts. 
boom. Guys, I'm trying my best to suck in my stomach right now. It's in the wind, it's not helping. Oh, there we go. Guys, that is <laughs> the video. 19 buffet, I gotta say, it's over $70. If you add the booze, it's around 85. For me, 100% worth it. That is not something you do every Sunday, but maybe something you do once or twice a year. It is glorious, there's so much food, it's an experience, you can just chill out. It's a great time. The people here were very incredible, kind, sweet, and very attentive. Coming by every couple seconds, do you need a seventh glass of wine, sir? You probably shouldn't, but do you want more? Yes, was the answer. In the end, I must say, highly recommend. Otherwise, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. Oh, I wonder what the most expensive pizza buffet is in Saigon. I want a Godfather's pizza.